Hi, this is Caitlin Kostick for VVH TV. I'm here in New York City at 2009's Big Apple Comic Con. We're here at Pier 94 in New York City, where thousands of people have lined up to see celebrities at New York's Comic Con. Iconic legend William Shatner. William, um, yes, how does it feel to be a part of Comic Con? Oh, it feels so good. I have this wonderful, warm feeling in my stomach. What's your favorite part about Comic Con? Signing autographs. It's my favorite thing to do. We have an excited fan here. What does it feel like to meet William Shatner? It was great. I love William Shatner. He was my favorite in uh, Star Trek movies. It's, uh, it's, it's so crazy. We've been watching Star Trek for forever since I was a little kid to actually finally see the man. It's like, it's, it's so, it's so cool. Michelle Nichols, how does it feel to be at Comic-Con today? Well, it's been a lot of years, and each uh, convention is different, and Comic-Con started out as comic books, and gradually other um, shows came aboard, and it's very different from a Star Trek convention, but it's, it's a lot of fun because you meet a lot more um, fans from other uh, walks of life and who have other interests as well as yours and it's it's been a delightful time how is it meeting your fans and getting to talk to them they they adore you star trek fans are star trek fans universally and uh, they are some of the, the best people in the world. I, I, I really love them because they come from such a, a warm and um, elevated place. You know, they believe in um, the uh, goodness of man and, and the uplifting of the spirit. And uh, what could be better? You know, they believe, we believe in the future. Xavier and the name of my booth is called Light It Up and a Grand Illumination and we just have everything you can possibly imagine or not imagine. We've got gaming things, uh, uh, sport things, we've got comic things, we've got pop culture things, we've got everything. And can you tell me what's the most popular weapon you have here? Well today I think it would be the Red Queen from a popular game Devil May Cry. This is awesome, the kids love this. And what else do we have going on here? I see a lot of lights and... We've got lights, we've got things for the kids, things for adults, things for the big, big kids, and the bigger, bigger, bigger kids. <laughs> Is this your first Big Apple Comic Con? No, no, I've been doing this for about 10 years, and we love the people, and you guys should totally come on down and enjoy yourselves. This is a family event. You'll have a great time. Imperial issue. When you join the Empire, you get one for joining up. What do you love about Comic Con? Uh, it's just the types of people that show up, and it's just fun. It's fun to run around and be goofy and stuff. Who are you looking forward to meeting at Comic Con? Uh, just the people I already know. I just love running around with them, and of course, meeting you was the highlight of my day. So. How does it feel to be at Comic-Con today? Oh, it's great. I'm delighted that they've expanded the show and they've got a new location, so it's fabulous. Look at the crowds. It's unbelievable. 
What's the experience like meeting your fans? Uh, it's always nice. I mean, to be, you know, have people come up and say, you know, uh, they either had a crush on me growing up or I was a role model for the women. Uh, I was one of the first, you know, powerful women on television. So it's always nice to hear those things. I, on my side, I like to meet people. So I'm, I love hearing people's stories, where they're from, what they're about, what they do. So I like to just come here and just meet people, and it's really a, a fun experience. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're up to these days? Okay, I'd love to. A um, couple of things. First of all, I am the voice of the Spider Witch on the Ghostbusters video game. She goes something like this. <gasps> oh, yes. Yeah, oh, lovely. Okay, and that's the voice of the Spider Witch. Um, uh, fa fans in New York might know me more from Bloomingdale's, where I coined the expression Bloomingdale's like no other store in the world, which is truly the best store, in my opinion. Um, and then I also have a company these days called um, Heroes for Hire, and all of these celebrities, or most of these celebrities here, I book into these kinds of events all over the world, and that's what really keeps me very busy most of the time. My passion, however, is Tai Chi. I'm a Tai Chi master which is something I like to share with the fans because it's a, it's a wonderful way of exercising and it's a mind-body-spirit exercise that I highly recommend. And how did you get involved with Tai Chi? Oh, how I got involved. Actually, it's all James Garner's fault. James Garner was starring on uh, Rockford Files, and he kept going to an acupuncturist because he had a bad knee, and he couldn't take pain medication for it. So I went to his acupuncturist and, and had an instant healing one day. I was on the, on the table and was completely healed. Uh, I had a really horrible cold, and I was supposed to sing and dance and perform, and so it was really important. And uh, he healed me, and I, and I said, you know, I, I started really getting into oriental medicine and trying to find out why it works and how it's different and why we in the West don't know anything about it. And then one day he said to me, he says, you know, you don't have to come see me spend $140 an hour doing uh, acupuncture. You learn Tai Chi. That's the same thing as the needles. And I went, okay, I like that. <laughs> so uh, I learned Tai Chi and really studied more and more about it. And now I'm a master and I teach four or five days a week. Wow, oh, that's great. I'm doing great Hi, now that I'm with you. <laughs> how's, your, how's your experience so far at Comic-Con? It's nice. It's great to be back in New York. This is the city I started in 40 years ago, before you were born. And how does it feel meeting your fans? And it always feels great to meet them. They're really nice people, and they're very enthusiastic, and it's nice to, it's nice to see people still remember something I did 28 years ago. What's your favorite part about all of this, this whole event? Uh, the money, actually. Uh, no, I, I, I'm teasing. It's actually You're just meeting it. the fans. Yeah, well, what can I tell you? Um, I'm in retail now, you know, that's they say. But I'm, it's just great to meet the fans, and it's nice to say hello to all of them. I get a lot of people just coming by and saying how much they enjoy the show, which is always good. It's nice to be remembered for something, you know. brings you here today? Uh, we came here looking for Star Wars toys and to uh, see what, you know, hang out with some friends and uh, check out the uh, the convention. And tell me about your matching outfit. We are, I'm Captain Jonathan Slavin of the USS Iwo Jima, which is a Starfleet chapter in New York City, Starfleet the International Fan Association, and we are Starfleet Marines. I'm Brigadier, it's my rank, and this is my cadet. Staff Gunnery Sergeant Benjamin uh, Spencebach. Do you love dressing up? Yes. What's been your favorite part about today? The games, the Star Wars figures. Hi, I'm here with Michael Carbonaro, one of the founders of the Big Apple Comic Con. Michael, could you tell us a little bit about the history of Comic Con? Wow, it's a long history. Uh, <laughs> actually, we started the convention, Big Apple convention, in a church. And now we're here in New York at the piers. Twelve years ago, we started in a church and built it up, went to the New York City hotels, and piece by piece built up, then Wizard, Entertainment and Garib Seamus came along and he's been buying comic book conventions and looked at our show, Big Apple, and said, well, this looks like a fun show. So he bought it and now we're making it even bigger and it's going to be a centerpiece of New York entertainment for 
decades to what come. What do you think the biggest attraction is here today? Well, there's a lot of attractions, but I have something here that is probably the most interesting attraction. Let's talk about it. What do we have here? Speaking of Disney buying Marvel, this is now, it is the first image of Mickey Mouse. Walt Disney, with his artist, Ub Iwerks, created this character, Mickey Mouse, in 1928 for a cartoon called... The cartoon is... Plain Crazy! That's it! <laughs> And this is the original storyboards for it, and the art is here on display, and it's valued at $1.5 million. So I guess this is the first Marvel comic book now. <laughs> That's great. And you said that during the year you buy and sell comic books. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, uh, no, that's where the real fun starts, yeah. Thanks a lot, Phil. I roam around the country buying comic books, going into people's basements. They're uh, with a company called Neat Stuff Collectibles I work for and with, and I literally travel. Sometimes, I think I logged, was it 400 hours last month? <laughs> From St. Louis to Chicago and San Diego and back and forth driving all around, looking at people's collections, meeting people. I mean, I meet people that are like 12 years old and 80 years old and you know they have incredible stories about how they bought the stuff and how they stay save their collections and how important they are and the memories and it's just a really fun business and it's a money-making enterprise as well so it's there are many more stories to tell this will be just part one how's that sound Caitlin sounds great no this is plain crazy uh, this is the third cartoon released by Walt Disney but the artwork was the first created and this whole character of Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and his friends the barnyard animals came from this uh, they used to live uh, I believe Walt Disney and his artist of iWorks came from there there were farm farm kids they came from uh, the barnyard and uh, they literally you know a lot of their memories and the things they did was working with animals so they created these caricatures out of the animals and Mickey Mouse there it is there it is that's the first image and that's what you saw on the storyboards created uh, then the talkies came around and the Steamboat Willie cartoon which was made after this lent itself a little more to the talk so they kind of released that one first and plain crazy got lost in the sauce but now the artwork has been discovered and uh, there it is the first Walt Disney and everything you've seen afterward, Disneyland and Disney World and Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge and all the characters came from that first image and that first idea. So, pretty interesting stuff. Welcome to Comic Con. Can you tell me what you're promoting today? We are here promoting the Cylon Sixes from Battlestar Galactica, the new movie, The Plan. And what's the inspiration for your outfits? Um, we are robots. <laughs> yeah, it's what um, she wears in the movie number six. This is basically her standard getup. And how are you enjoying Comic-Con today? It's awesome. Really fun. It's crazy. I'm here with John Signorelli of Comic Link. We sell vintage uh, comic books and comic book art online through auction and for sale. Um, but. This, this event has become so big and so diverse, you know, with respect to, to who comes here as a vendor, who comes here ha as a fan or as a collector. You know, it's just incorporated so many more areas of popular culture. Makes it, you know, probably next to the San Diego Con, probably one of the best in the country. Vincent Zerzolo, the owner of the First Time Superman comic book. Vincent, could you tell us a little bit about this comic? Sure, Caitlin. Uh, this comic book is Action Comics number one from 1938. It's the first appearance of Superman in a comic book. This comic book recently sold on our website, comicconnect.com. It's an online auction site for $121,000. And can you tell us about your other comics that you have here, too? Sure, it'd be my pleasure. Uh, what we do is we buy and sell comic books, and we also have an online auction company called ComicConnect.com. And some of the other books we have are... 
Here's a Captain America number seven in 9.4 condition. Extremely rare to find a book from this time period in such a high grade. The scale is one through 10, and 9.4 is usually considered about perfect. So it's a near mint book. And this book will probably sell in excess of about $30,000. And let's talk more about this comic book. Could you tell us about who bought this comic? I couldn't disclose the person who bought it. It's private information, but what I can tell you is he's a local New Yorker, and he was thrilled to get the book, and it's something he'd been looking for for his whole life, and it's very rare. There are only 100 copies known to exist in the world, probably less at this point. And basically, this year alone, my company, ComicConnect.com, has sold four of them, which is unheard of. We had a copy sold in March for a world record price of $317,200. That was in a 6.0 condition. And then we had three subsequent issues sell, including this one at $121,000. What makes this book so important is not only is it the first appearance of Superman, but this is the book that really heralded the age of the superhero. Superman was so popular that it spawned all these new superheroes. Batman came out, Captain America came out, and so on and so forth. So it's really the first prototype superhero. I'm here with Brian. Welcome to Comic-Con. Thank you. Could you tell us a little bit about the comics that you have here? Sure. Well, what I have here is actually uh, original comic artwork. It's the original drawings used in production of the comics. Uh, these are all one-of-a-kind, unique pieces. Um, all kinds of stuff, ranging various time periods, characters, genres. You know, a lot of really uh, renowned and sought-after, accomplished comic artists. Could you describe um, two of your favorites? Uh, sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, my personal favorite would probably be the Silver Age Spider-Man cover. You know, Spider-Man's just such a great character. Everyone's so familiar with him. Uh, amazing story, and this was just the, the prime period for me um, in going back and reading that stuff, even though I wasn't around when it was coming out. Um, I'm also a big fan of Thor, so Jack Kirby. Um, can't go wrong with Jack Kirby Thor comic art. He's an uh, amazing, uh, brilliant, wonderful character. So that's among my favorite. And then I'm into some of the more modern stuff from my childhood, um, like Watchmen over here, which I'm sure everyone knows now since the movie came out, is uh, a great story in comics that kind of changed the way that comic books and superheroes were looked at. So my, my tastes run all over the place. And what years are these comic books uh, covers from? Oh, they vary. You know, this is um, late 80s uh, all the way back to the 60s, and I've got Golden Age artwork that going back to the 40s and 50s. So, you know, everything from uh, over 60 years ago to six months ago. And how did you get involved in collecting comic book original pen covers? <laughs> well, uh, I started as a comic book and toy collector um, and through my business, Neat Stuff Collectibles. Um, you know, I eventually just kind of got tired of seeing the same comics and wanted something unique and I would find artwork and just, uh, I liked it and the market really developed into uh, a valuable commodity that people were after. So I, I enhanced my collecting. Well, you definitely have something unique here. For the people at home that don't know the process of this, could you describe to us what this artwork is? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it, it, all, it all starts with um, sometimes people will pencil an outline, but usually you have um, the artist who will do the line work and set up the basic artwork, and then sometimes they'll ink it themselves or they'll have someone else that'll come in and ink over uh, their artwork, add the shadowing and the detail you see there. Um, and then for production, they make a copy of it and they shrink it down to a smaller size, about the size of a comic book page, and you'll have a colorist come in and, and do the coloring on those copies. As you see, there's no color on these. They want to keep it, uh, keep it pure. And uh, after that, it goes to print, and we wind up with the finished comic book. I'm here with Brandy Roderick, actress, model, reality star. How's everything going today? Everything's going good. You've got a really, really good crowd here today at the Big Apple Con, and everyone's really excited to be here. 
And what is it like meeting your fans? I know you have so many great fans. You know what? I love it, and that's why I come to these things, because it gives me an opportunity to actually interact with my fans, So, and they've been really great today. Can you tell us about any upcoming projects you have? Sure. I'm hosting a new show called Playboy Shootout, and it's a reality show where photographers and models compete uh, as teams to actually win a pictorial in Playboy magazine. So it's really exciting. It's a lot of fun. That's great. And what was it like being on The Apprentice with Donald Trump? Oh, well, I love Donald Trump. He's adorable. Um, I had a great time, met a lot of very interesting people, friends, and had a, had a really good time. It was very exhausting, and it was very tiring, but it was definitely a great experience. I'm here with two comic book fans. Hi, girls. How are you? Good. Fine. How are you? And where are you from? And your names? I'm from South Jersey. I'm from South Jersey, too. We're Laura and Beth. What do you love about Comic-Con? <laughs> I guess watching everybody. It's just a lot of fun to see people who are into the same things we are because, I mean, let's face it, we're kind of nerdy, so it's fun to see people who are also kind of nerdy. Yeah. You, and, you can't find people like this outside of the internet. And could you tell me a little bit about your outfits? I see your dress as Batwoman and Robin. Um, your costumes. Yeah, she's wearing my clothes. <laughs> What made you choose these two characters? They're a matching set. And Batman's my favorite, and I bought the costumes. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Comic-Con. Can you tell me a little bit about your outfit? Oh, uh, yeah. That, um, it's actually a um, man, um, symbiote, alien, an alien um, symbiote. And what's your favorite part about being at Comic-Con? Actually, everything. I like to meet um, some of the other um, comic book characters, the sci-fi characters, and, and especially meet um, some, uh, some of the celebrities. What made you dress up as this character? Uh, I don't know. I just, I just, um, since I'm a big comic book fan, I figure like um, dress up as, as a character, you know. I figure like um, gives, it, gives, um, gives you more attention. Okay, great. Could you tell me a little bit about your outfit? You look great. Uh, thank you. I'm just as Rogue from the X-Men, her costume from the 90s up to about 10 years ago. And what made you dress up as Rogue? Because uh, she's my favorite comic character of all time, just like one of those tragic figures because she can't touch anybody. So, What's your favorite part about Comic-Con? Favorite part is actually everything, you know, getting to meet all the celebrities and the artists. Uh, everybody's been very nice and it's been a wonderful experience. Mark, could you tell me who you're dressed as? I'm dressed as an original Sith character. My name is Darth Irukunji. Um, I'm basically fighting with the New York Jedi, which is a team of stage combat and choreography group. And we do um, lightsaber choreography and fights on stage. And what made you dress as this character? It was a character of my own design. I wanted to think of something really evil, and all black always works, but you throw a little bit of crimson in there, and it, it kind of heightens everything, and I kind of like it. So I like the style. Thank you. And what's your favorite part about Comic-Con? Oh, so what part isn't my favorite of Comic-Con? I, I just love meeting all of the artists, meeting the getting my autographs from some of my favorite actors and actresses, and of course the comic books. You know, you can find almost anything here. If you, if you can't find it at, the, at your local store or somebody can't find it online, somebody here has it, and you can always find what you're looking for at a good price. Okay, great. Thank you. Nintendo is sponsored here at Comic-Con, and I'm right now in the area where the new Super Mario's Brothers on Wii is coming out November 11th. And we're going to talk about the top toys to buy this holiday season. Karen, tell me what you have going on here. Okay, for older kids, one of the most exciting things right now is the Twilight Scenic game. Uh, Twilight's a huge brand. Everyone's really excited about New Moon coming out, and it's a great thing that you can do with older children. Parents can play together, and it's... Um, it's got a lot of scenes from the film. You see that there? 
and this is coming out right now. It actually should be in stores right now. And another really exciting thing, of course, another movie tied property is Princess and the Frog, which is coming out. It's the first African American princess, and it's also one of Disney's first Disney princesses, new princess being introduced in many, many years, more than a decade, I believe. And then the other hot toy, of course, is the hamsters. These are the Zuzu pets. These are all the fun of having a hamster and none of the mess. And you get these great habit trails and uh, you can get them all set up and they run around all by themselves. These are really hot. They're a big seller right now. Really hard to find. Really hard to get. They're available at Toys R Us, Amazon, and lots of other retailers. Going to talk a little bit about Allermates. Could you describe the product to us? Sure, it's a, a brand new line of allergy awareness products for kids. My son has food allergies. Her son has food allergies, it's, it's very prevalent and it's, it's on the rise and there's nothing for kids to wear to let people know what they're allergic to when they're at school, when they're at camp, when they're on a play date and there was an incident in my son's school which, which gave me the idea where I wanted to create fun stuff which lets people know what they're allergic to and at the same time I wanted, I wanted to be colorful. We made uh, dog tags for boys, uh, there's, there's pink for girls. There's wristbands, and we, we're going to come out with a whole line of products for kids who have allergies. And um, not only that, we have a website, Allermates.com, and I don't know if uh, if you can see this, but basically you get to meet all the Allermates if you go to Allermates.com, and um, like the peanut character, his name is Peanutty, and uh, kind of making a little fun of P. Diddy, but he's like the, the guy who used to be really cool, but now nobody wants him around. Um, Eggy is like a, a cook. He can't figure out what comes first, the chicken or the egg, or what part of him kids are allergic to, because everyone's allergic to something different in an egg. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, this is the peanut allergy tag, peanutty. The back of the tag tells you exactly what, what you're allergic to. This is the pink one. We have eggy, we have wheat. A lot of people are, these days have a wheat um, allergy or intolerance. Intoler this is um, a pink shellfish crab. Uh, we have uh, soy. We have, um, over here we have dairy. We have fish. We have all the main allergies that uh, the, the top 90% 90 per, 90 of, of people who are allergic to food are allergic to these eight. And we also have wristbands. Uh, this is the peanut band. I'm wearing a peanut and a dairy band. And um, right here, this is a, uh, a tree nut band, an egg band, and we'll be coming out with the rest. This is just uh, literally we just got, we've had this for about a month now. Toy model that you could find in just about any major department store of the car that you are actually you're standing in front of. Uh, it's available now at most Toys R Us's or Walmart's or Targets, and uh, it's the actual car that you're standing in front of. They made loads of models of it. What I have here is a 1970 Plymouth Superbird. Uh, I'm the second owner. I've had it for about 17 years, and it's been in two movies. One of them was Gone in 60 Seconds, and the other movie was the, the most well-known one is Cars. It was the prototype that they used for the movie. Uh, it's all Dynacoed out with the stickers in the eyes and the 43 on the door that you've seen it in, you know, the kids have seen it in the cartoons. Uh, it gets a lot of attention wherever I bring it. It's a numbers-matching car. Our son that lives down in Wall Township, Thomas Calhoun, is really our chief mechanic on the car. Uh, he does it all. Uh, awesome uh, fabricator, uh, welder, mechanic. Um, excellent, excellent. The car last year raised over $8,000 for children with cancer. We brought it to a benefit show, and uh, in the course of one weekend, it raised, like I said, close to eight grand. And that, that really feels good. We bring it to a lot of, uh, a lot of functions where it helps out handicapped children, and uh, it's, a, it's the star of the show. The kids love it for what it is, and the adults know it for what it really is. Comic-Con with Doc Gooden. Hi Doc, how are you doing? Good, everything's great. Uh, having a good time here today. And is this 
your first time at Comic Con? Yes, yeah, first time uh, getting to see a lot of guys that I was fans of also, a lot of the wrestlers. So I grew up in Florida, but I was a big wrestler fan as well, so just having a good time. Uh, what's your favorite part about Comic Con? Favorite part is just sitting on different, you know, people uh, that come here. Because normally, like this, when I do signings for charity, what have you, is always baseball fans. But being here, you got people from different walks of life, from fans of different people, so it's great. You're watching Big Apple Comic Con on WVVH. Stay.